we have been discussing about page rank all this while we will see it in a brand new light if you can recollect i told you what exactly page rank uh, does it is all about um who what you are is decided by who your friends are if good people point to you it means that you are good so you are good if all these people who are pointing to you are good now that's a very vague way to put it can we quantify it nicely we saw um, program a whole lot of programming we uh, programming screen casts you saw where where we exactly show you how page rank is computed and why exactly it's done that way is what will um, be our focus right now in our discussion for this lecture and the forthcoming lectures okay so let us start with a nice example uh, let me try writing a, a graph for you all a very simple three node graph so here is that graph here are three nodes let me name it a b and c let me put edges from b there's an edge from b to c and there's an edge from c to b and there is one edge from b to a and one from a to c so what do you observe you observe that there is um, this uh, edge only one edge comes from a to c while there is one edge coming from c to b but there are two edges going from b right one to a and one to c correct okay so now let me do the following let me write down a table and make a note of what's happening here i need three columns let me write that down one for a one for b and one for c okay so here we are so i'm going to write the values of um, a and b and c and what am i going to do with it i am going to start with some value for a b and c let me write that down a here b here and c here let's start with uh, the value of a being um so assume we had resources we had resources allocated to a b and c equally what do i mean by that by that i mean i take a b and c and i give one third my resource to a and one third of all the resources to c and the remaining one third to b which means i start with one thirds to a one thirds to b and one thirds to c and what happens next if you remember the programming screen cast all that we did there was we took these values a is 1 by 3 b is 1 by 3 c is 1 by 3 and we told them and and we observed and we told you all that a is going to give 1 by 3 to c correct okay so which means the new value of c the new value of c is going to come from a correct so c will be 1 over 3 uh, exactly the value that it had before right okay so what will be the value of b let's see what's going to be the value of b b takes the value from c as you can observe which means b will be whatever c was 1 by 3 right uh, let me write that down 1 by 3 and what will a be a what will a be a is taking whatever b had but b has two edges going which means it will divide its 1 by 3 equally to a and c giving a half of 1 by 3 which is 1 by 6 
and C gets half of 1 by 3 which is 1 by 6 once again. So let's see what happens to A. A gets 1 by 6. Let me write that down. 1 by 6. But then again as you can see B gives 1 by 6 to C. Correct. So what should I do? I should increment C here by 1 by 6. So this is the second iteration value. So let me write this down. What is 1 by 3 plus 1 by 6 here? This is nothing else but 1 by 2. Correct? A simple calculation tells me it's 1 by 2. Let me write it down. 1 divided by 2. Oh, this, this was my first iteration. This was my second iteration. Let me go ahead and do the third iteration just for uh, clarity sake. So once again, what is um, what will be the value of um, let's say C. C gets all that A had. Okay. A this value was 1 by 6. So C gets whatever A had. So C, C becomes 1 by 6. Correct. So please note these values 1 by 3, 1 by 3 and 1 by 3 is what we started from. Correct. And that needn't necessarily uh, continue to be the values. The values change. You saw we started with 1 by 3, 1 by 3, 1 by 3 and it became 1 by 6, 1 by 3 and 1 by 2. And now we are computing the third iteration. Right. Okay. So let's see what happens in the third iteration. Um, so let me remove all the um, annotations that I did and let me compute the third iteration. So what's the third iteration? It's very clear that we wrote C as 1 by 6 because C takes the value of whatever was the value of A. So it became 1 by 6. Correct. Now uh, what will be the value of B? B simply takes whatever was the value of C. And what is the value of C? The value of C was 1 by 2. So which means my B will be 1 by 2. Right? Let me write that down. 1 by 2. Okay. Perfect. So far so good. So what's the value of A? Now here's a small problem. As you know, A takes half of B. Right? Which means B was 1 by 3 and A takes half of this. As you can see, A takes half of what B was. B was 1 by 3 as you can see. So A becomes 1 over 6 which is 1 by 2 of B. 1 over 6. Correct? Okay. Perfect. Now, now, now as you can observe, uh, B also gives 1 by 2 of its existing value to C which means B was 1 by 3 and half of that is 1 by 6 and C gets 1 by 6 more. Correct? Plus 1 by 6. What happens to this? This becomes 2 by 6. Correct? Which is 1 by 3. So let me replace this by 1 divided by 3. And it goes on like this. So my question for you all is the following. If this process keeps continuing like this, where will it reach? So let me remove all these things. So my question is this. If this, if this keeps continuing like this, goes on like this, where will it reach? Will it at all, will it converge? Will this process converge? So what do I mean by that? By that I mean, will this go on like this? randomly 1 by 3 becoming 1 by 6 and then 1 by 6, 1 by 3 becoming 1 by 3 and 1 by 2, 1 by 3 becoming 1 by 2 and then 1 by 3 and so on. What will happen? Will it ever converge or will it keep continuing with these random values? So let us try verifying what exactly happens in our next lecture.